Compost is great, but terra preta is better. This is terra preta, a rich, dark, dark soil with a primary ingredient is your compost, but then also with charcoal added to it. Nutrients get into the charcoal. Beneficial bacteria and fungi also get into the charcoal, and that makes this way richer than uh, normal compost. You can make biochar just in a small little fire pit like this, where you have a normal fire pit modified, dug into a cone shape, so that the charcoal forms in the bottom of this pit where it's deprived of oxygen. And this pile of brush is going to be the fuel wood to make the biochar. This is primarily invasive species like Norway maple and buckthorn, white mulberry, honeysuckle, and then there's also a little bit of yard waste in there, and this is all going to be made into biochar, meaning we're sequestering atmospheric carbon by doing this. The idea is that you want to create a hot smokeless fire, burning off all the gases, so that's all that's left over is just biochar. So you start the fire at the top, it'll draw itself down through, Embers will fall into the pit underneath, and eventually that whole thing will be full of bi good quality biochar. Now the fire is established and starting to draw itself down through the fire pile. And also there's some leftover charcoal here from last, or unburnt logs from last year. So I'll pop those onto the fire in a little while. So now the fire is fully engulfed and some of the pieces are starting to fall into the area in the bottom and starting to pile forming a cone shape with the top of it consuming all the oxygen and underneath all of that we're going through good quality pyrolysis starting to form biochar by this point the stacked wood is completely collapsed into the fire pit the pit is over half full and you can see the top layer is consuming the oxygen, there's very little smoke coming off, and underneath we've got really good charcoal starting to form. So all this stuff down in here, that's all good quality biochar. Here you can see I've randomly cut the pile apart with the chainsaw doesn't have to be stacked, so it's just random lengths. However, I just chopped down through the pile. And there's probably enough here for having another fire another day. Well, we're already almost ready for the quench. Rather than having a normal fire and letting everything go to ash, which is worthless, having it in a cone like this means that you've got all this incredible biochar which once added to your compost makes your super soil your terra preta and you can see how hot it is with the red hot ambers in there apparently that gets anywhere from 400 to 600 degrees which is the perfect temperature for making this stuff anyways quench is next Part of the magic of biochar is it has high internal surface area, so the fungi and bacteria have a place to move into. When we quench it, by going around the outside of the pit and steam shocking it, it fractures it even further. Runs dead, water runs down the outside of the pit, comes up through the center. All that steam helps to drive off the last of some of the hydrocarbon gases. And you get that nice black biochar. Now this stuff is not totally quenched because there's still going to be places inside here that are going to be burning. So we have to really make sure that it's quenched properly. It'll usually take a couple of pitchers of water. So if we dig into it and turn it, you can see there's still red hot ambers in there. So that's an opportunity. Get some more water 
and give it another dousing. I also happen to have this 10 gallon can, so if I fill that, one, I get an idea of how much I've made, but also I can put the lid on it, get the oxygen out, and stop any potential for fire from restarting. And I could give it another quenching in the can. So this stuff is ready to use. So here I've got kitchen scrap in the composter. And you layer your compost the same as normal. But then you add some biochar to it. That helps with the composting process. And the nutrients get into the biochar to help do what's called charging the biochar. So when this stuff is all composted, then you have what's called terra preta. And you can use the terra preta in your vegetable garden or, in this case, transplanting rare and endangered trees that are going to be used on Earth Day projects. So this is that nice black soil that we get from making terra preta. Here's a better image of the pit. You can see once I've got everything out of it how it's not really all that big. Anyways. I had a couple of pieces of wood that didn't get fully burned, just set them off to the side. I'll use those next time. So this is where I sort of conveniently dump my excess sawdust from my guitar shop. And over here is the biochar. Both of these are ready to be used in layering into compost to make terra preta. So the interesting thing is this sawdust and all other biological material, kitchen leftovers, etc., are still active. They're still rotting. And the gases that come off of that go into the atmosphere. Same as a piece of wood rotting in the forest. Very little of it goes into the soil. This, on the other hand, this biochar is a stable carbon matrix and it'll last in the soil for up to 3,000 years. So literally we are talking about the single best method for sequestering atmospheric carbon by making terra preta which means you have to make biochar.